Hello, I'm Norman Swan. Welcome to Tonic. Today, a problem that affects one in six children, one in 10 adults, and up to one in five of us during our lifetimes. And recent research has shown that over 60% of people with this problem don't get appropriate care from their doctor. I'm talking about asthma, a real problem with real issues and where people are suffering unnecessarily. It's quite a scary feeling. You feel like there's a kind of vice around your chest and you can't expand your lungs properly and get a decent breath. And in fact, it's harder to breathe out than it is to breathe in. And it's just a, a horrible, really uncomfortable, tight feeling. And then there's the coughing. In my case, the cough was the worst symptom and the coughing would go on and on and on and on. And every time I lay down, um, I'd feel like I was suffocating and have to sit up again. So, you know, it, it's, it's really horrible. It was very hard to get rid of all the gunk that was sitting in my lungs. Asthma hospitalisations and asthma deaths have been a great success story in this country. We've dramatically reduced asthma deaths. We've dramatically reduced not only hospital presentations, but intensive care unit admissions. And that's all down to improved organisation of care and more consistent delivery of preventive treatment to many asthmatics. In my late 20s, uh, I started getting a lot of chest infections, a really persistent cough for a number of years before anybody really picked up that I had asthma. I am concerned that we've got rid of the serious end of asthma complications, but we're still tolerating too much in the way of simple morbidity or avoidable uh, symptoms at the same time. And I think it was once when I'd had the flu and I got really, really sick and had pneumonia and uh, I had x-rays and I had antibiotics and they couldn't get rid of this persistent cough that the GP that I'd seen, who was a different GP to some of the other people I'd consulted, said that she thought there was something underlying this problem and uh, that she would do some tests and she did spirometry and um, all sorts of lung function tests and came up with the diagnosis but I quite probably had had asthma for five or six years before there was a formal diagnosis. I think the diagnosis uh, can be made simply and accurately. You need a combination of symptoms, most commonly breathlessness and wheeze, to a lesser extent cough, together with some evidence of abnormality of lung function. And I think the more precisely we diagnose asthma in that way, the better it will be. Clearly with little children, it's harder to do lung function tests than it is with later primary school adolescents and beyond that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. In relation to lung function testing and asthma, most uh, GP surgeries now can do spirometry, which is a fairly simple maneuver where you blow out as hard as you can into a pipe. Then I want you to put that into your mouth. That's it. And just breathe normally. Breathe normally. I want you to take a huge breath into the top and blow out as hard as you can. Okay, while well, you go, big one in. All the way out, blow, 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 all the way to the very, very end. When you get to the very, very end, take a huge breath back in. Off you come now. That's good. Excellent. Well done. Yeah. Okay. And that now, the technology is available, it's quite cheap, quite reproducible, and this should be the test done, I think, before uh, asthma is, is diagnosed. Then, if an abnormality is found, a, a bronchodilator, a drug designed to ease the tension within the airways, is given, and if lung function improves between the first and the second test, that's very strong evidence of asthma. And up this way is the flow or the speed at which you blow out and your lungs are full at this point here and you start blowing very quickly it goes up to the fastest flow which is called the peak flow and then as your lungs empty out the flow drops right down until it gets down to zero flow and that is the size of your breath or your vital capacity. In doing spirometry a normal young adult should be able to empty their lungs in a second and a half or so with obstruction to the airways, flow through those airways is restricted, so it takes longer to breathe out. So the amount of air you blow out quickly is reduced, 
and that can be easily detected with spirometry. You can see here... After an abnormality is detected on the first test, the bronchodilator drug is administered by inhalation, the test is repeated, and if we find a 15% improvement or, or thereabouts, we can be confident, if there are relevant symptoms, that that person actually has asthma. Further, we can look at the improvement after bronchodilator together with how bad the lung function test was before that and give some indication as to how severe that asthma might be. Huge one in. Well done. It's right that the community should be worried about asthma and that we link breathlessness as a symptom, for example, with possible asthma. However, there are many other reasons for people having asthma, you know, from unfitness to heart problems to anemia. Uh, and uh, it, it is easy, and I've seen it happen many times, that someone with a, attracts a label of asthma when in fact they don't have it at all. To the very, very end, all the way, that's good, that's good. Push, 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 push. What I mean by a chest infection is um, terrible bouts of bronchitis a lot of phlegm, terrible cough, uh, very uncomfortable tight chest, feeling very ill, um, quite often a temperature and had to have antibiotics. Uh, and I had a couple of bouts of pneumonia as well, but uh, it was the cough that just would go on for months after each bout and uh, I just never seemed to get rid of it. Well, I didn't sleep much. Um, I would be awake coughing most of the night and I would get very short of breath and I'd have to sit up propped up with a whole lot of pillows just to breathe relatively comfortably. Possibly can keep going, keep going. If in conjunction with a suspicion of asthma, spirometry was performed competently, then that diagnosis of asthma should be excluded. That's important because people don't get treatment they don't need, but also because it should leave the doctor on to a, a further exploration of what, of what might really be causing the breathlessness? Well, I was very relieved to be diagnosed, really, because, you know, I, I couldn't understand why I could never recover from these chest infections and why they were so frequent when I was otherwise quite fit and healthy and active. And um, it was really restricting me in a lot of ways and it was very depressing as well. And once the diagnosis was made and... Um, you know, I was put on appropriate preventive treatment, I got better so quickly uh, that, you know, it was just a great relief.